here with Heidi Butkus today, former educator and blogger and owner of HeidiSongs.com. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you, Sue. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, um, about your background and about your business? Sure. Um, well, I taught for 25 years. I'm currently on a leave of absence. This is my second year on a leave of absence. And um, right now, I'm just running my business, HeidiSongs.com, and I give teacher trainings nationwide. And um, I teach teachers how to use music and movement and other developmentally appropriate techniques uh, to help children learn mostly at the pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade level. Great. Tell me more about, about why it's good to use music to help teach kids at that age. Well, most children learn very well through music. It goes straight into um, long-term memory, usually, especially when you add movement to it. Um, Children respond to music very naturally. Um, it's kind of like a universal language to them. And so since we have a lot of um, immigrant children in our nation, um, it's a great way to break down barriers and help the class to feel that they're a community, a family. And um, children seem to just love it. It's rare when you find a child that does not enjoy the music. And, does not, and who does not learn well through it. And it just makes everything in the classroom fun and much easier to learn. And um, it's also good for the children to have a lot of um, movement there. It gives them exercise and you know, obesity is a problem. And so this is a good way to get them up and moving. They don't have to sit still. So in these days of ADHD and, and childhood ob obesity, learning through movement is a great idea. Well, that sounds fantastic. So as a teacher of the younger kids, you're also meeting parents who are in the school system for the first time. Yes. What advice have you learned through the years on, on how to train parents to, to best support the educational system for the kids? Oh, to be supportive of the teacher as much as possible and to um, do the homework with the children, to read to them every single night, and to seek out opportunities to help them at home, help them with their schoolwork, to volunteer in the classroom, be present in the classroom as much as possible. Um, I think those are the most important things. And um, just to be there for their child, I think that children spell love, T-I-M-E. They, they know you love them mostly by the fact that you spend time with them and talk to them and read to them and sing with them. That's how children know that you love and care. And um, I think that's really the most important thing of all. Oh, that's wonderful. My, my kids tell me not to sing, no. <laughs> I think they just sing. Uh, so tell us about um, parent-teacher communication. What are some of, the, if, some of the tips that you give to teachers and how to best communicate with parents and keep them informed about what is going on in the class? Well, that's always a hard one because you never know if a note that you send home is actually going to be read. Um, I often am telling parents, uh, telling teachers to try to find an app that will conceal their cell phone number and they might be able to send a text message, that kind of thing. Um, it, it can be hard because you really want to have as much uh, communication as possible with parents. It can be very difficult with working parents because many of them want very much to be involved and have daily communication with the teacher, um, but don't want to nag the teacher, right? They want to they wanna know every day how the child is doing, but if they can't be there to pick up every day if they have to rely on a sitter, sometimes it's difficult because then the teacher is, you know, telling the sitter some information and then the sitter has to translate what she heard or what she thought she heard or he and tell the parent that and things get lost in the translation it's so much better if you can just tell the parent directly so um, you know it's, it's always difficult because it all takes time you know so yes. there's there's issues there that are difficult to solve Mm -hmm. Is technology helping or not as much yet? It is, but it depends on the expertise of the teacher mm -hmm. and how, how much they want to try to use that technology because there's technologies available, but um, a lot of times you have to be willing to use your own devices, mm -hmm. like your own cell phone. So I finally got used to using my own cell phone and I just would text message teachers all the time, but I know teach parents all the time, but I know there's plenty of teachers that would never dream 
of giving a parent their mm -hmm. cell phone number. And I probably have been very lucky that no one's ever abused it. Mm -hmm. But then I'm, I'm rather frank with parents, mm -hmm. and I would just tell them from the very beginning, if you yeah. harass me and call me all the time, I will stop picking up my phone. <laughs> and so they just don't. They, they, they never do. Oh, no, okay. I never had any problem, but I, I'm sure that it would come. Eventually it would come. Okay. Cool. So. Cool. Okay, last question. Um, one piece of advice for a kindergarten teacher just starting out. Oh, enjoy those kids. Um, love them. Make a relationship with the kids and their parents. Because a good relationship with the parents and like a child that's happily learning covers over a multitude of sins. So, you know, I tell the, the parents at the beginning of the year, if you forgive me of you know the mistakes I made, I'll be happy to forgive you of the mistakes you make. So I tell the kids that the person who makes the most mistakes in the classroom that will be me. That will be me. You know, so it's okay if you make mistakes because I'm going to be making mistakes each and every day. And you know, and I, I tell the parents too. And I said, you know, don't believe everything you hear because it's going to be filtered through. The, the eyes and mind of a five-year-old, and um, then I won't believe everything I hear either because I hear a lot, you know. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy drank 12 beers last night, and Mommy said not to tell in that kind of way. And you just never know, you know. You know, we moved to Pomona, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, oh, you're not supposed to be going here anymore, are you? You know, but you just never know what's true and what's not. You just don't know. So yeah. unless you communicate with the parents directly, you just can't know what's true. And that is true going both ways. So um, I think that's very good and very, very sage advice. Uh -huh. Well, thank you very much, Heidi. It's been wonderful to meet you.